Hello, how's it going? Today, we're 10,000 years before the Dark Portal, and we're going to be looking at the War of the Ancients. Or at least some of it. The start of it, anyway. But it's all been built into this, and I'm bloody excited. Let's go! Whilst the Highborn were meddling with the Well of Eternity, a young night elf named Malfurion Stormrage had been hanging out with Cenarius. With Cenarius's help, Malfurion had become the first mortal druid on Azeroth. Cenarius liked the cut of Malfurion's jib. Ever since the first time the night elf spirit had explored the Emerald Dream, Cenarius had sensed something special. He had high hopes that Malfurion would spread druidism amongst the other night elves and return them to their natural roots. But unbeknownst to them and the greater night elf society, Ashara and her followers had started having little brain trust meetings with Sargeras. The fallen titan hoped that he could use the sorcerers and their magic to bring him and his burning legion to Azeroth. Without a suitable gateway, it was going to take ages, and apparently Sargeras is lazy. I feel the same way about travelling to places like Australia, to be honest. I'd love to go, but I'd rather someone teleport me to Australia than sit on a plane for like 17 years. I don't know how long it takes to get to Australia. Much like he'd done with the Eridar, Sargeras reached out to the Highborn and manipulated them via their hubris. Lord Xavius was the first to hear the call, so he brought Sargeras to Ashara's attention. Sargeras promised them power beyond their wildest dreams. He advised them to just kinda keep this to themselves though, don't tell anyone else, let it be a surprise. The Highborn used the Well of Eternity's energies to summon the Legion's minions. Waves of demonic forces flooded out from the Queen's Palace and straight up murdered any Night Elf that crossed their path, except for their Highborn allies. These forces were led by by Manoroth the Destructor, Hakkar the Houndmaster, and Archimond the Defiler. They stormed across the Night Elf Empire like they were on a deadline or something. A Night Elf resistance force led by a noble named Lord Kurtalos Ravencrest formed to stand against the Legion's onslaught. Among these defenders were Malfurion, his twin Illidan, and a priestess from the Sisterhood of Elune who they both loved dearly, Tyrande Whisperwind. To say these three peeps are important is possibly the biggest understatement ever made in the history of people saying stupid stuff. Ravencrest's forces initially suffered many defeats against the demons, but they did make some gains. Malfurion delivered one of the most decisive early blows in the war. He unleashed his druidic magics from within the Emerald Dream and struck down Lord Xavius. Not only did this destroy one of the Highborn's most powerful sorcerers, it also proved the incredible potential of being a druid to the Ravencrest's freedom force. Illidan also contributed. During one engagement, his courage and mastery of arcane magic helped save Ravencrest's life. Illidan was appointed the commander's personal sorcerer and would later go on to lead the sorcerers within the resistance. Tyrande saved countless lives during the war, she would go on to become the High Priestess, leader of the Sacred Sisterhood of Elune. However, the demons continued to spill through the portals. The Legion even managed to bolster its strength with a new breed of demon. Sargeras had warped the defeated body of Lord Xavius into a twisted demonic bugger with horns and hooves. He was the first of the Satyr and was tasked with cursing many other Highborn, transforming them into these jerks as well. Malfurion realised that the Resistance could not defeat the Legion alone, so he asked Illidan and Tyrande to accompany him to the Moonglade near Mount Hyjal. When they got there, they went up to Cenarius and were like, could you maybe give us a hand? That is, if you're not too busy talking to squirrels. Cenarius agreed that he would help and that he would rally the wild gods, but they were unpredictable beings, so this was going to take some time. And Malfurion was like, great, because we have loads of time. Absolutely fantastic. Malfurion was being sarcastic, obviously. So while Cenarius did that, he went to the dragon aspects. They had a meeting at Wormrest Temple to discuss how best they could handle the Legion. Naltharion offered up a solution at this point. He convinced his fellow aspects to give up some of their power and put it into the dragon soul, an artifact of his design. The weapon would focus their powers and scour the Legion from the face of Azeroth. Seems legit. But, here's a bit of dramatic irony for you guys. Naltharion's innate ties with the Earth had made him uniquely susceptible to the Old God's influence. They'd all tainted the bedrock around their prisons and had been whispering to him for a while now. He had darkness in his heart. During a furious battle between the Legion and the Resistance, the five Dragonflights began their final assault. Naltharion unleashed the full might of the empowered Dragon Soul and absolutely smashed the Legion's faces. But just as hope began to swell, he went and turned it on his own allies. Nearly all of the blue Dragonflight were brutally murdered in this betrayal. The Dragons initially attempted to stop Naltharion, but ultimately, they and the Elves had no choice but to bloody cheese it! As the Dragon Soul's energies flooded through Naltharion, his body began tearing itself apart. A raw power engulfed his own soul. With a howl of pain and rage, he buggered off into the the sky. Naltharion's assault had changed the world forever. He'd shattered the unity and power of the Great Dragonflights. Malagos, leader of the Blue Dragonflights, was driven mad with grief after seeing his followers die. At this point, Naltharion became known as Deathwing. The Night Elves' morale had also been struck a terrible blow by these events, and it didn't help that Illidan had mysteriously disappeared. They feared for his life, but none of them could have imagined that he'd actually just abandoned the Resistance. In order to understand why Illidan decided to go it alone, you just need to look at his bloody brother. Illidan had always been driven by a determination to rise above his brother 
Hitler and become a hero for his people. Yet time and again, Malfurion's deeds eclipsed Illidan's, and he was super jelly. The final straw was the fact that Illidan had finally plucked up the courage to profess his love for Tyrande, and her response was, nah, I like Malfurion. After this rejection, dark thoughts plagued Illidan's mind. Here's some more dramatic irony for you. Illidan didn't realise these dark thoughts were being seeded by the Satya Xavius, but due to these dark thoughts, he set out to join the Legion and gain power unimaginable. Somehow, he managed to secure an audience with Sargeras himself, because why not? He's Illidan. He told Sargeras that his plan was to steal the Dragon Soul, and Sargeras liked what he was hearing. Sargeras granted Illidan exceptional power by scarring his body with foul tattoos and burning out his eyes. What a fantastic reward! The newly empowered Illidan set out to steal the Dragon Soul. During this quest, he stumbled across Deathwing. Deathwing had resorted to bolting adamantium plates to his spine just to stop the power within his soul from tearing his broken body apart. Illidan managed to obtain the Dragon Soul and delivered it to the Highborn. They immediately used the weapon to move on to the next phase of their plan, using it to create a massive gateway within the heart of the Well of Eternity. What for, you ask? Well, I'll tell you. This gateway would be large enough for Sargeras himself to enter the world of Azeroth. Here's one more thing you need to know about Illidan. Later, he would claim that this betrayal was for a noble cause. He joined the Legion to learn more about the demons and find a means to destroy them. But we'll get to that part of the story eventually. And we're leaving it there! I love ending these videos on cliffhangers. This is how TV used to work before you could just binge watch everything. We've managed to cover quite a bit of the War of the Ancients in this video, but it's still going strong. In Friday's video, we'll be talking about the Nightborn Elves and the Sundering. That's right, the thing I've been hinting at for months. We're finally there. So if you want to see that, make sure you subscribe to the channel and come back on Friday. If you enjoyed this video, press the like button, talk to me in the comments. But all that's left to say is, thanks very much for watching, and see ya!